This is part two of my test between a Giant Anthem 26er and 29er and a Niner Jet 9 and Niner Air 9. Uh, so if you're watching this and you didn't see part one, you probably want to go back and watch that. Uh, and so this video is the conclusion of the test. All right, just a couple of last looks at the, some design differences in these two bikes before we get to tomorrow's test. You can see that the uh, the bottom linkage on the suspension of the Niner is kind of underneath the bottom bracket. And uh, also, one thing I really like about this bike is the, the top tube, how low it is, which gives a low center of gravity. I'm um, looking over here at the Giant. The linkage is above the bottom bracket. Both of the the um, forward pivots are in front of the bottom bracket, but you know, I guess that uh, the way Niner designs it, uh, they are able to get a little bit shorter wheelbase. You'll see the gap between the seat tube and the tire uh, is is more than it, what it is on the Jet 9. And even though it's a sloping top tube, it's still a little bit higher than the than the Jet 9. All right, so that's it for the uh, kind of the, the on paper look at the bikes. Uh, tomorrow's ride test is going to tell me which one's faster. Okay, so I, um, I just finished the lap this morning on the Jet 9, and my time was 14.39, which was about nine seconds slower than what I did two days ago on the Jet 9. Um, but I did have a chain slip that probably cost me a couple seconds. Um, I did the, uh, I, I wore my heart rate monitor today, and so um, I wanted to kind of see what my average heart rate was between the two bikes. Um, average heart rate on that one was about 166. So now it's time to go back to the parking lot and jump on the Anthem X. Uh, I really like doing these comparisons on the same day because... The trail conditions are the same, and uh, physically I'm about the same. My legs felt a little bit heavy today, so um, you know you get the, the kind of the same same physical condition. So um, we'll go back and get the other bike and give it a go. Okay, so the results are in between the Jet 9 and the Anthem X. Uh, yesterday uh, was when I was on the trail. I didn't film right after my ride. I got to talking to some people, but uh, the uh, Jet 9, as I told you on the trail. My lap time was 14 minutes and 39 seconds. The Anthem X came in at 14 minutes and 32 seconds. So even though it was my second lap on the Anthem X, I was still a little bit faster. I did mention that I had slipped the chain a little bit on the Jet 9. It only, I only stopped pedaling for a few seconds uh, to get it back on the chain ring. I actually just popped down to the small ring. Uh, but the, uh, the Anthem X is a little bit faster. So. You know, both bikes at times are so close, you know, maybe one day the, the Jet 9 might be faster. But uh, I just want to point out some differences that I noticed riding the bikes. The uh, Jet 9 is a little bit more agile, but to tell you the truth, when I got back on the Anthem X, it was still a very quick handling bike. Uh, I didn't notice as much of a drastic difference in the handling. Uh, both are very quick handling bikes. Uh, the Anthem, you notice just a teeny bit more flex. The Jet 9 is really stiff laterally. I'm only 145 pounds, so I'm not going to flex the bike a whole lot. But someone who is a big rider, uh, you know, may want to go with the Jet 9. Uh, but I'm going to stick with the Anthem so far. I've got one more test to do, and that's going to be on the Air 9, and that's coming up in two days, and uh, we'll see how how that one does. But the Anthem X, I did notice it was more plush than the Jet 9. Uh, one inch of travel makes a big difference. And I like a plush riding bike because this bike is still very efficient when you pedal, but yet when you hit a, a big G out or a real rough section, uh, it's, uh, it's really plush. I ran the Pro Pedal on number two on the Anthem and number one on the Jet 9. Uh, but the Anthem, uh, when you open up the Pro Pedal on downhill, the um, man, it's it's really plush, and so on on the anthem. Um, I did notice the the lighter weight. The uh, the Jet Nine 
uh, the, the, the two bikes I was riding, uh, the Jet 9 is about a pound and a half heavier than the Anthem X. The frames are about a, a pound difference, and I did notice that, that weight difference on the Anthem uh, when I was you know, really accelerating hard up a hill. Even though this is Florida, the course that I'm running has very few flat sections. Uh, it's hilly the whole course. And so I, I did notice the weight difference, and I think that's why the Anthem X was a little bit faster. Uh, so uh, between the two bikes, they're both incredible bikes. Uh, you know, if, if Niner could lighten up the Jet 9 by half a pound, three quarters of a pound, man, it would be a perfect bike. And the Anthem, uh, you know, if, if Giant could get the wheelbase just a little bit shorter, shorten up the chain stays uh, by half an inch, I, I think it would really uh, increase the handling of the bike. Uh, you know, some people like the a little bit slower uh, steering. The Anthem is definitely a little bit more stable. It's easier to hold a line going through a corner uh, than it is on the Jet 9. But I did notice that the bike that I was borrowing, the Jet 9, the handlebars are almost an inch wider which makes a bike feel a little bit more twitchy. So, you know, that may have been part of the difference. But as the geometry numbers that I showed you uh, show, the, uh, the, the Jet 9 does have a, a shorter wheelbase and shorter chain stays. So, uh, again, both are great bikes. I could really, I could ride either one. Since I own an Anthem, I'm not gonna switch bikes. Um, if I had the Jet 9, I, you know, I'm not sure if I'd switch to the Anthem, but I did like the plushness of the Anthem and the lighter weight, especially going up and racing in the mountains. I don't do a lot of racing in the mountains. Uh, I do a couple races a year, the O-Ram and the uh, Cahutta. Actually, I usually do the 65-mile version of the Cahutta. And uh, this year, uh, I think I got 11th place in the 65 on this bike. So doing uh, long climbs in the mountains, I think the uh, pound lighter uh, of the Anthem it would really uh, come into play because some of those climbs I mean they could take you half an hour to get up and there was about 10,000 feet of climbing in the in the Big Frog that's what they call it Big Frog 65 and the off-road assault of Mount Mitchell both of those have over 10,000 feet of climbing so I, I think I would prefer the Anthem uh, in in that race because of the, the lighter weight so we've got one more test to do and what I'm going to do on that test is I'm going to do two laps. I'm going to do a, the, the lap on the Air 9. I'm going to rest for 10-15 minutes, really recover, like I did when I compared these two bikes, the Jet and the Anthem. And then I'm going to do a second lap. And I'm, I, I want to see how much I slow down uh, on the second lap, because this, the Anthem was seven seconds faster than the Jet on the second lap. So uh, we'll see kind of what the, the difference in the, the two laps on the Air 9 are going to be and see how much I slow down. So since I'm on the same bike, it'll be a pretty good comparison. So we'll see how the Jet the Air 9 does. I picked up the Air 9 from the bike shop today. This is it. This bike comes in at 22.96 pounds, 1.8 pounds lighter than my Anthem X. Really, the only difference between this and my Anthem X 29er is the frame. The components are almost identical. Both bikes have SRAM X9 rear derailleur and SRAM X9 shifters. Both are set up as a 1x10 with an MRP chain guide. Both have the ZTR Crest 29er rims and the Maxxis Aspen tires. Both have a carbon handlebar. Both have the same fork. So this will be a really good comparison. Tomorrow's the day. I'm going to go out and do two laps on the Air 9. Again, taking about a 10 or 15 minute break in between and see what the difference is between the two laps, but more importantly, to compare the lap time on this bike uh, compared to the other bikes. So today wrapped up my testing of these bikes and I learned a lot on today's test. Uh, my first lap on the Air 9 was 14 minutes and 45 seconds. That's about 15 seconds slower than the Anthem X and seven or eight seconds slower than the Jet 9. And uh, I did slow down quite a bit on my second lap today. I slowed down about 25 seconds, about 15 minutes and 10 seconds. 
um, which shows me that the other day when I did the Anthem X on the second lap after the Jet 9 and was a little bit uh, faster on the Anthem X uh, by about nine seconds, uh, I probably would have been a little bit more faster had I done the Anthem X first. Now I did feel like I slowed down more on the second lap today on the hardtail just because it takes a little bit more out of you. Uh, my back hurt a little bit on today's test uh, simply because I'm just not used to a hardtail. Even though I do strength training a couple days a week, um, you know, I, I still would have to adjust my back to riding a hardtail. Um, I did notice that the hardtail combined some of the characteristics I was looking for in a bike. And that is a more agile bike and a lighter bike. However, the lack of suspension uh, you know, really takes its toll after a while. And so I did slow down quite a bit. So good test today, learned a lot, and I want to wrap this up with a, a few um, pointers or, or things that I've learned over this test that I may not have mentioned. So I mentioned during this test some things that I've learned by doing this is, one, you know, you ask yourself where do 26ers fit in? I really think for most cross-country applications that a 29er is the way to go. They just roll faster and smoother. However, uh, for the trails that I ride the most, if I ever had to choose between a lightweight 26er full suspension or a 29er hardtail, I still think I'd go with the 26er full suspension because that's how much I like full suspension on these kind of trails with a lot of roots. Uh, I just... I. My riding style, again, is to just stay in the saddle and pedal. And, um, you know, my back started hurting a little bit at the end of uh, the 29er test on the hardtail today. Uh, so, you know, I just, I love full suspension. I think where 26ers really have their application is in long travel trail bikes, five, six inches plus, uh, and obviously downhill and, and dirt jumping type stuff. Uh, but, you know, personally, I owned a Mach 5 last year, and I sold it to get a Niner Rip 9. And I did not want to have to switch back and forth between different wheel sizes. And so that's why I went with a, a 29er trail bike. And I, I love the Rip 9. I've test ridden a few longer travel 26ers after I bought the Rip 9 just for the heck of it. And I, I just love the way the Rip 9 rolls, and that's a whole other another test and, and uh, story there but um, so anyway I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching maybe learned a few things at least it was some entertainment for you uh, I, I really have enjoyed doing these tests and uh, the information I've gained is really really valuable and I have the confidence now and uh, when I start my race season in the fall that if I don't get first place it's not it's not the bike uh, and so at least I know that I'm going to be on uh, hopefully the fastest bike for me. So thanks for watching.